Hello everybody, today's presentation covers atomic spectra. Uh, this first slide, this image is uh, something which is called, uh, this phenomenon is called sun dogs. What's happening is that there are ice crystals in the upper atmosphere which are causing a diffraction of light. Uh, so we're seeing the sun here and off to the side we see what looks almost like uh, a rainbow forming. Um, it's caused by the scattering of light. Uh, ice crystals in the upper atmosphere are causing this effect. To better understand atomic spectra, it's important to review the properties and characteristics of light. Uh, first of all, the speed of light, uh, we use C for this, is 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. It's actually true that the speed of light can change slightly depending on what substance light is traveling through. It'll travel a little bit faster through a vacuum, outer space. It slows down just a little bit when it enters into our atmosphere. Uh, it moves even at a different speed still if it's moving through a different medium like water. Uh, this is why a straw inserted into a glass of water can look like it's, it's being bent uh, when in, in reality it's not. Uh, this equation right here relates the speed of light, C, um, the wavelength, this is uh, a lambda, and f for frequency. Um, so we can see that the speed of light is going to equal the wavelength multiplied by the frequency of light. Um, this equation relates energy to frequency. Um, so energy will be equal to the frequency multiplied by something called Planck's constant, which is this value right here, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Uh, We've learned that light has both wave and particle properties, uh, and we refer to uh, the particles of light as photons. Uh, now, with the anatomy of a wave, um, the distance from crest to crest or trough to trough, if you like thinking about it, is what we call one wavelength. The frequency of a wave would be how many cycles of a wave, crest to crest, would pass an observer at a fixed point in a given unit of time. So typically frequency is uh, given as units of hertz uh, or cycles per second. How many wave cycles pass a fixed point observer in one second of time. The information on this slide relates energy and the different uh, parts of the EM or electromagnetic spectrum. We can see that uh, EM radiation that has long wavelengths will have low frequency and low energy. Let's think about radio waves or microwaves. Short wavelengths are going to have very high frequency and high energies. Gamma rays and x-rays would be examples of this. Uh, so if we think about increasing orders of energy, uh, radio waves and microwaves are lower energy, uh, then infrared, then visible light, even higher energy still would be ultraviolet, then x-rays, and then gamma radiation. Here's an additional look at the electromagnetic spectrum. Please note frequencies are listed here, wavelengths are listed here. Of most importance on this slide is the information about the uh, wavelength and frequencies of visible light. Uh, please note that red light would have a longer wavelength, which would mean that it would have a lower frequency, so it would have lower amounts of energy, whereas uh, purple, blue, indigo, uh, violet colored lights, uh, these are going to have shorter wavelengths, uh, thus higher frequencies and higher energies. This is really important for understanding the emission spectra of elements, which we'll be discussing in a future slide. Let's imagine an atom of hydrogen. Within the nucleus, there would be a single proton, and the atom would also have one electron, which would be located in the first energy level. If we add energy to that electron, let's add energy by heating the atom, or maybe by running electric current through uh, a collection of hydrogen atoms. That energy can actually boost electrons to higher energy levels. Perhaps they go to the second or the third or the fourth, fifth even energy level. Now the electrons that have been boosted to higher energy levels, we say that they have been excited. They will not stay at those higher energy levels forever. Eventually they are going to return to the lower energy levels where they started. Uh, we say that they're returning to their ground state. So eventually those electrons from hydrogen will return back down to energy level one. Now the way in which the electrons will move back down to level one can be varied. An electron which was at level five might go directly from level five immediately back down to level one. Or maybe it goes from five to three to one. Or perhaps it goes from five to three to two to one. Uh, so the electrons are capable of jumping between energy levels um, and they will return to their ground state. Now, 
when the electrons are jumping down energy levels, they will give off photons, and uh, for certain size jumps, it'll actually give off photons of visible light. Uh, for example, in the Balmer series, um, we have electrons which are jumping from the fifth, fourth, or third energy levels down to the second level. Uh, please note here the colors of light that will be give off are violet, blue, and red. Uh, the 5 to 2 jump is the highest energy jump, so this will give off the highest energy color of light, violet. The 4 to 2 jump is a slightly smaller amount of energy, so this jump, 4 to 2, will give off blue light. The 3 to 2 jump is actually the smallest in this series, so this jump, 3 to 2, will give off red light. Now, uh, there are two other series. Um, the Lyman series produces ultraviolet emissions. This will include jumps from level 4 to 1, 3 to 1, or 2 to 1. Because all of these jumps produce ultraviolet emissions, which are really high energy, we need to um, recognize that the change in energy between level 2 and level 1 is a very, very large uh, increase in energy. Uh, finally, the Paskin series involves a jump of an electron going from energy level 4 down to energy level 3. This is a very small jump, uh, and this is why it's producing a form of inf uh, electromagnetic radiation, which has a lower energy, and this would be in the infrared range for the Paskin series. We see on this slide different examples of atomic emission spectra. Uh, for hydrogen, we can see a unique banding pattern is produced like this. This is the one that Niels Bohr was trying to explain when he proposed the Bohr model of the atom. Uh, here we see a different atomic spectra. This is for sodium, another one for helium. Here's neon, here's mercury. Uh, please note that neon produces a lot of different wavelengths of red light, and this is why neon lights look to be red. Um, now, why do the different elements give off unique uh, emission fingerprints? This is because the atoms of different elements are unique. Um, their emission spectra are going to be different. And uh, a lot of this has to do with the fact that the nuclei of atoms for different elements are not the same. They'll have differing numbers of protons and neutrons. Uh, so. Therefore, an electron which is dropping from energy level 4 to energy level 2 in a helium atom is going to be releasing a different amount of energy than an electron which makes that same level 4 to level 2 jump in a hydrogen atom. Again, this is due to the differences found in the nucleus of these uh, two different elements. A hydrogen nucleus contains just a proton. A helium uh, nucleus contains both two protons and two neutrons. There are a number of important applications of atomic spectra. Uh, we use spectroscopy to identify substances by the colors of light that they either emit or absorb. In our class, we will be doing a flame testing lab to observe this phenomena. Uh, atomic spectra are used in astronomy to identify which elements are present in stars. Please reference the short video about the Keck Observatory um, in relation to this idea. Uh, atomic spectra are also used for remote sensing to collect information about emitted radiation, to learn about phenomena like deforestation or the impact of global warming on glaciers. And in addition to this, we've learned uh, by seeing the NOVA video about fireworks that different elements, uh, specifically different metal salts, are used in fireworks to create different colors as the fireworks explode. Let's review the differences between absorption versus emission. In absorption, we have electrons from an atom which are going to absorb energy. Uh, this can be in the form of light or heat or electric current. Uh, that added energy will cause the electron to jump to higher energy levels. As it moves to that higher energy level, it's being excited, or we, we can call this process excitation. Emission is the reverse process. This is when excited electrons, which are located at higher energy levels, are going to eventually fall back down to lower energy, energy levels, eventually back down to their ground state, whichever energy level they started at, and will release photons of light with specific wavelengths and colors. Um, actually, there are other emissions possible, too, depending on the size of the jump. So we could also have ultraviolet emissions or infrared emissions if we have really big or really small jumps being made by those electrons. This slide contains information which will be used in class to calculate wavelengths, 
frequencies and energy for electron transition, so when electrons are moving between energy levels. Uh, these all relate to hydrogen atoms. Uh, so what do the different symbols mean? Delta E means change in energy. So this would be the change in energy as an electron moves from a higher energy level to a lower energy level. E high for high energy level, E low for lower energy level. This can be calculated by uh, multiplying the frequency F by Planck's constant located right here, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Um, an alternate way to calculate the change in energy for an electron making a jump is to use this equation right here, where we're going to take the uh, negative Rydberg constant, which is 2.180 times 10 to the minus 18 joules, and we're going to multiply that by, uh, please note this is in square brackets now, so we need to do this first, 1 over the higher energy level squared minus 1 over the lower energy level squared. Uh, if we had an electron which moved from level 4 down to level 2, 1 over n high squared would be 1 over 4 squared, so 1 over 16. And the 1 over n low squared would be 1 over 2 squared, so 1 over 4. So we'd subtract um, 1 fourth from 1 sixteenth. Um, an alternate way to calculate frequency would be to take the Rydberg constant, this value here, dividing by Planck's constant, this number here, and then multiplying by 1 over n low squared minus 1 over n high squared. Um, additional information we need to connect to this is that C, the speed of light, will be equal to the frequency, lambda, multiplied by, I'm sorry, the wavelength, lambda, multiplied by the frequency. Um, or we can use algebra to rearrange this and solve for the wavelength, lambda, which is going to equal C, the speed of light, divided by the frequency. Please note an alternate symbol for frequency looks like a V. Some websites and some books will use that symbol as opposed to F.